it's really a, a war of signals. It's it's a it's an electronic warfare war. So the, the question I think becomes, what do you do about a giant swarm that's coming after you? And yeah, so are EMPs got, there an option? So EMP most likely would be an option. I, I would say you know that's one of the most effective options. Um, but then you know depending on your proximity, down all the cars in the area, all the other different EW type or electronic you know equipment is going to go down temporarily. Those birds are going to crash. So you know if they come back online, are they going to be able to fly again? Maybe some of them can. That would be a nuisance. Well, a car will come back online and still be operable. A bird that comes out of the air is going to be curled up in a ball. Um, so, but otherwise, also the uh, the counter swarm. I mean, you can still use some. You know, there's direct energy weapons. There, there are you know other ways to do mass jamming. There's going to be a lot of things out there that you or I could not imagine uh, that probably exist already, and and hopefully they do for uh, for for the for the right side. <laughs> It would be swarm versus swarm. Detect a swarm that's inbound fast enough to get your own swarm in the air. And most likely, if you get your own swarm in the air, it's going to be an air-to-air swarm instead of a more, uh, you know, attributable. So there's the term attributable, like if it goes down, you can attribute it to which nation state. But then there's also the question of what attributes do those drones have? So the first one that's coming at you might be, it's got the attributes of, you know, air to ground and and ISR. Whereas if I put a counter swarm up in the air, it could be solely for counter swarm air to air and my swarm is going to take that swarm out. So that's a, that's one other way. The question is time. And the question is, well, what if I don't have my own swarm at the ready to, to um, beat up on another one? So there's a lot of different ways. Uh, and, you know, there, there's a thought, though, because we're again, we're talking about, you know, the, the relations to different uh, wars, right? So we we can draw upon World War One with the advantage to the defensive. Another one is from uh, the great air power theorist, Julio Duhay. Uh, he in, in the 1920s, he published a book called The Command of the Air. And he theorized and this is one of the greatest military theorists of air power in history, if not the greatest, that a bomber will always get through a um, a counter swarm. Chances are one of those one of those birds is going to get through, and then it's going to be able to do its Death Star trench run and accomplish its mission. So, and then you know the other idea is in. Um, that that same theory applies to you know, nuclear weapons. So, if uh, you see a swarm or a, just a you know a formation of B fifty two bombers, and they're going over the pole to to you know in a hypothetical strike, the Russians are going to throw everything that they have at them. But most likely, that theory will ring true, and one of them is going to get through, and it would put a a nuclear weapon on a you know a, a Russian population. Um, as horrifying as that thought is, Russians would throw at them. And that's it. That's it. That's game. It's game over. If, if one of those things falls, that's over. And you could think of something so critical that uh, that one drone gets through the counter air swarm and inflicts pain that is unacceptable. You're taking out an entire city, but it could be taking out, you know, the strategic command and control node of something that if we lose lose it we we lose too much so that's you know kind of a scary side